As we turn our hearts and minds to prayer this morning, you are invited to the altar rail to pray. 
And I want to just lift up this morning those who were involved in the shooting just a few blocks from here this week. We lift up Dion Patterson, the shooter who was in the Northside Hospital building um, because the VA um, had not been able to resolve his mental health issues. And, um, And so he was seeing his mother's doctor to see if they could help with the mental health issues. And um, and we see what happened there. So we wanna be in prayer for Dion, for his mother and for their family um, during this season. We wanna be in prayer for Amy St. Pierre who lost her life. And for Lisa Glenn, Georgette Whitlow, Jasmine Daniel, Alicia Hollinger, who were all shot. And for all of those who now have trauma from that day. I would invite you to lift up your own staff who practiced our shelter in place policies um, on that day as well. You don't expect to go to work and have to shelter in place because an active shooter is on the loose. We also lift up those who are involved in the Allen, Texas mall shooting. So far we know that at least eight have been killed and seven wounded. And y'all, it doesn't have to be this way. It does not have to be this way. Let us go to God in prayer. I must tell Jesus. Oh yes, we, we've come, oh God, to tell you all about the things that are going on in this life. We've come, oh God, in our weariness. We've come in our pain. We've come in our grief, oh God. And we've come in our expectation. For we know that you are still God and you are still on the throne. We've come, oh God, because we are not those people who walk around without hope. For you are the hope giver, oh God. You are our help, our ever-present help in the time of trouble. You are our strength when we don't know where our strength is coming from. You are the one who can heal us, who can restore us, who can renew us, oh God. You are the one who has told us to turn in our guns, beat them into plowshares, and to work for peace, oh God. You are the one who has called us to be our brother and our sister and our neighbor's keeper, Lord. You have called us to be a people who care for the whole and not just for a certain people. And Lord, we must confess this morning that sometimes we just don't understand. We don't understand why things happen. We don't understand why some people are protected and while it appears that others are not, oh God. But you are the one with the answers. So we draw near to you to listen for your hope, your will, your comfort, your guidance, and your peace, oh God. We've come today lifting up all of those who are victims of gun violence. We've come today lifting up those who thought that they had no other way to go than to shoot somebody. We lift up those who are grieving, oh God. We lift up those who are looking for work. 
We lift up those who do not know where their next meal is coming from. We lift up those that don't know how they're going to fill up their car this week or how they're going to buy groceries this week, oh God. But we know that you are at work with us. That you are at work ahead of us. That you are making a way out of no way. That you are the great provider. That you are, you are God, oh God. So we also come to praise you. We come to praise you and to thank you for if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough. We've come to shout hallelujah because in the midst of it all, you've still been so good, oh God. We thank you for blowing the breath of life into us one more time. We thank you, oh God, for allowing us to gather in this place and around our computers and our tablets and our phones this morning, oh God. We thank you that you continue to love us better than we can love ourselves. And that you enable us to love others, oh God. So, Lord, now have your way. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Blow a fresh wind and a fresh fire through this place, oh God. Make us know that we know that we know that we know that even though we don't understand that you are at work in our midst, oh God. And, Lord, we ask your forgiveness. We ask your forgiveness that we have allowed ourselves to live in a world where mass shootings are a dime a dozen. We ask your forgiveness, oh God, because we have allowed ourselves to live in a world where our policies create structures and systems that other people we ask your forgiveness, oh God, when we have not done your will. When we have broken your law, when we have rebelled against your love, when we have not loved our neighbors, and when we have not heard the cry of the needy. We ask for your forgiveness, oh God, because we know that it frees us. That your forgiveness frees us so that we might be joyfully obedient to you and so that we might experience abundant life. So Lord, we're so grateful that you have taught us to pray the prayer that you taught the disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus of Friends, it's giving time. It's the time where we get to participate in our gratitude toward God. We come with our tithes and offering to say thank you to God and to give back to God a portion of what God has given unto us.
You can give in the offering plate here in the sanctuary. You can give online through our secure site, atlantafirstumc.org slash give. You may give through Cash App, text to give, mail checks, and to give special gifts through the church, you may contact the finance office. God, you've been so generous and gracious unto us. We ask that, we take, that you would take now this portion of what we give back to you, that you would multiply it so that we might continue to be your hands and feet in this city and beyond. Amen. So let's turn our hearts and our minds to the scripture this morning and to the text. We are continuing our Easter series called The Aftermath. And during these 50 days of Easter, we are continuing to delve into the aftermath, what happens after Jesus is resurrected. We spend a lot of time and a lot of energy getting to the resurrection, but we don't often hang in there after the resurrection to see what is to be learned then. So today we're going to start in Acts, the seventh chapter. And Acts is one of those New Testament scriptures. It's right behind the Gospels. And remember that the Gospel writer of Luke, we believe, is also the writer of Acts. And his whole point is to tell this story of Jesus and who Jesus is and why Jesus matters for us. So today, we start in Acts chapter 7, and I'm going to start in verse 54. When they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears. And with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When they had said this, he died. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that we are, you are indeed our worthy and holy God. So speak, Lord, for we are listening. Speak, Lord, because we came for a word from you. Speak, Lord. And hide this, your servant, behind that old rugged cross, so that everything that is said, 
and everything that is done comes straight from you, O God. This is your servant's prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. So we're starting in the middle of a story that actually starts in Acts chapter 6. So if you have your Bibles or your electronic devices, go ahead and scroll back to Acts chapter 6 because we have to start there so that the story makes sense. There were seven people who were chosen to be like an extension of the apostles. These seven people were chosen because they were full of wisdom and power and full of the Holy Spirit. And they were chosen to help expand the story of Jesus, to help expand the reach of the story of the resurrection. And Stephen happened to be one of those people. Stephen was full of grace and power, as Acts chapter 6 verse 8 says. He was full of grace and power and did great wonders and signs among the people. So much so that the people were angry at him. And they couldn't withstand, the scripture says, they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Ouch. <laughs> and so they secretly instigated some people to say, we've heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. Hmm. Stephen's telling the good news. The people are mad about it, Miss Ruby. And, and they, they start to revolt against Stephen and against the good news. Have you seen this lately in our life? I, I see it in the media every day. I see it in, in what's happening in our world, in our government, in our Congress, with our people. We see people revolting against the good news. They're revolting because they don't want to hear that everybody's the same. They're revolting because they don't want to hear that you don't have the power or the, the you don't have permission to take somebody else's life. They're revolting because they don't want to hear that it really is your responsibility to care for your neighbor. There's nothing new under the sun is what Solomon said. And here we see it again. Stephen is being revolted against because people don't want to hear the good news. They brought him before the council. We also know the council as the Sanhedrin. The, the gathering of people who ruled in Israel. When have we heard this before? Oh, Jesus was hauled before the Sanhedrin, was he not? And they said that he was blasphemous. Did they not? And, and they, they seized him. They took him, arrested him, beat him down. He died. And here we go again. It says, all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. I invite you to read chapter 7 when you're home later today or later this week because the speech that Stephen gives, his response to the council is maybe one of the most important, if not the most important speech in Acts. 
It teaches us, again, our biblical history. It teaches us how we get out of God's will. It reminds us that what we're going through, somebody else has gone through, and that every single time, God has made a way. So by the time we get to chapter 50, to verse 54 in verse 7, they've heard the old, old story again. They've heard about Moses again. They've heard about David again. They've heard about Solomon again. They've heard about Jacob again. They've heard that the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands, but with the people. And yet, they are enraged. They are angry. And they ground their teeth at Stephen. Why does that phrase matter? Well, to ground your teeth, if you go back to the Psalms, that was a way of saying that people were angry about the prophets. When they ground their teeth, they were angry at what God was saying to them through the prophets. They didn't want to hear what God had to say. So here we are again, angry about what God is saying, but Stephen is filled with the Holy Spirit. What do you do when somebody's angry with you? How do you respond? Thank you for the, thank you for the, um, the honesty this morning. She said, not in a godly way. <laughs> How many of us are willing to be honest this morning? When people are angry with us, they make it known that they are angry with us. How do we respond? Mm -hmm. But Stephen, Stephen saw the Lord. He saw the Lord in his presence and he saw the glory of God and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He saw that the promises of God were fulfilled. He saw that what Jesus told them before his death and resurrection had actually happened. For us, this is just the same old, same old story, but for everybody else, for these folks, this is the first time that they are understanding that what Jesus said has come to pass. Nobody's excited about that but me, Miss Ruby. But, but because this means that every promise that God has made, this means that every time God has said, I am with you, this means that every time God has said, do not worry, this means that every time God has said, do not be afraid, this means that every time God has said, I know you think it's over, but I get the last word in this. Every time God has said something, every time God has made a promise, God has made good on it. Stephen said to the angry mob, look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. but they covered their ears. They turned off the live feed. They stopped coming to church. They stopped listening to anybody who has any good sense.
They covered their ears. And with a loud shout, they all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Now, this is also incredible because these people are stoning Stephen after they have falsely accused him of being blasphemous, of breaking the rules of Jewish tradition, after they have falsely accused him of being against God and against the Jewish tradition, and then they drag him out of the city, which is a Jewish requirement for stoning. You take the people away from the temple and outside of the city gates to signal that they have been removed from the community, that they have not done what they were supposed to do, that they have not kept their covenant. So they have taken him out of the city because of their own religious tradition to then do something that's against the religious tradition. Kill him. There's nothing new under the sun. We want to take people out and take people down. Because of one little thing we cherry picked and we believe to be true. Instead of understanding the full story. And then this thing takes a twist, y'all. Just like Jesus, Stephen prayed, Lord, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and he cried out in a loud voice. Because remember, these folks are screaming and yelling at him and throwing rocks at him. And he blows our mind. He says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. If we go back to Luke chapter 22, verse 69, we hear Jesus say from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And if we go back through the Gospels, we hear Jesus say over and over and over, forgive them their sins and be healed. You are forgiven. Be healed. You are forgiven. Get up and walk. You are forgiven. Go and prosper. I don't know about you. But when people are throwing rocks at me, forgive them is not the first phrase that comes to mind. And yet, in the aftermath of the resurrection, it is forgiveness that matters. It is the forgiveness of those who have crucified Jesus. It is the forgiveness of those who are stoning Stephen. It is the forgiveness of those who have lost their way. It is the forgiveness of those who have harmed somebody. It is the forgiveness of those who have stayed silent when they could have stood up for somebody else. It is the forgiveness that matters. So what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is freeing people 
and ourselves to receive the promises of God. See, if we dig a little deeper here, (laughs) we understand that we can't be with God in the resurrection if we are sinners. Mm, Quiet. We don't say that very much in church anymore, do we? We cannot be with God in the resurrection to come if we are sinners. And over and over and over again, Jesus gives us opportunities to be forgiven. It's important to call your pastor, to have your family call your pastor when you're passing away so your pastor can do your last rites and say things like, Lord, forgive them as we return them to you. We don't just do that because it's something fun to do. Let me tell you, it has not been fun for me to sit next to beds of people who are passing away. It is a high privilege, but it has not been the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. We don't do it because it's tradition. Because the church has done this for ages and ages and ages. We do this because forgiveness matters. It sets us free and it sets other people free so that they might receive the promises of God. Why does forgiveness matter? Because we are forgiven. We're going to come to this table in just a minute, and this table is all about forgiveness. Why does forgiveness matter? Because God has forgiven us, and then God said, and go and do likewise. Go forgive somebody else. We miss the mark. We don't receive the benefits of coming to the table of Christ if we do not in turn go and forgive somebody else. So today, that grudge you've been holding on to for 50 years, 20 years, 15 minutes, let it go. Is it worth misery? Is it worth stress? Is it worth shame? Is it worth missing the mark and never getting to experience the abundant life of Christ either here in the land of the living or in eternal life? Forgiveness matters. What's more important? Being mad? Or being with God. This is why forgiveness matters. It sets us free. It sets us free. What Stephen is doing here when he is praying, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. He is setting these people free to be able to live the abundant life that he was trying to tell them about. Mind-blowing. He's trying to teach them that there is more to this life, that there is joy in this life, that there is peace in this life, that there is grace in this life, that there is mercy in this life, that there is love in this life. They get mad, they kill him, and he says, God, set them free so they can experience what I've been trying to tell them about.
Forgiveness matters because we are forgiven. Because God says that we are to forgive others. And because forgiveness sets us free and sets other people free. Finally, forgiveness matters because it points those we forgive and it points us toward salvation. The longer you hold a grudge, the longer you stay out of the will of God. And outside of the will of God is where chaos exists. Outside of the will of God is where hatred and meanness and, and disobedience and evil exists. It is disobedience to God which causes our need for forgiveness. Don't hear this wrong. Forgiveness does not let people off the hook. It's not the easy way out. It doesn't even stand in opposition to justice. That they're not at odds. To, to say that I forgive someone does not mean that they do not have to deal with the consequences of their actions. But that work is not our work. That is God's work. And this forgiveness grants us peace and freedom. And it grants peace and freedom to those who are offended and to the offenders, even as they deal with their own Aftermath. The truth of the matter is this. Hurt people hurt people. Haters hate. Liars lie. Stealers steal. Killers kill. But it's up to you how you respond. It's up to you what you do with that. It's up to you how much forgiveness matters for your own peace, for your own joy, for your own abundant life. So, why are you still holding on to that stuff? Why are you still angry? Why are you still hurt? Why are you still mean? Why are you still standing in your own way? Stephen knelt down and cried in a loud voice. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he died. And he died free. And he died receiving abundant life. And he died sharing the good news of Christ with everybody, everybody else. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table 
not to Pastor Jasmine's table, not to Atlanta First table, not to the United Methodist Church's table. But Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. From the beginning of all creation, God's word was love. And that love has been lavished upon us, not because we've earned it, but because it's God's great gift to us. Live in that love and bring peace to others. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us. <sighs> thanks be to God. He took bread. He gave thanks to you, O oh God. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and he said, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. 
Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and through the interwebs, O God. And on these gifts of bread and juice, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on your faith journey, you are welcome at the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you are worshiping from home, just get a cracker and some juice, but whatever you gather, make sure that you can eat it all because it has been consecrated to the Lord Jesus Christ. The table is set. The invitation is made, and you are welcome. Please follow the direction of the ushers as you come. All of the elements are gluten-free, so if you are gluten intolerant, you do not have to be concerned about that. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. Just for me. Just for me. Just for me. name and face in Jesus mind take and eat <coughs> just for me <coughs> and when you drink this juice this juice reminds us how much Jesus loves us that there is nothing that we can do that will keep Jesus from loving us and so our job is to go and love everybody else too. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Take and drink. <laughs>
go forth from this place, but not from the presence of God, knowing that you have been forgiven so that you can forgive others. Rise and go in peace. this bread and eat knowing that forgiveness matters take this juice and drink knowing that you have been forgiven so that you might forgive others rise and go in peace knowing that abundant life is yours right here and right now just forgive Thank you so much for worshiping in this place today. We're grateful that you have chosen to be a part of this community of faith. We pray that you will be safe this week and that you will find ways to extend God's forgiveness and grace to others. That's the invitation. Go forth and forgive. I know it sounds easy, but I think God's going to give you some opportunities to practice it this week so that it becomes a little easier for us. Rise and receive this benediction. Go forth from this place, but not from the presence of God, knowing that Christ had you in mind on that cross knowing that you are forgiven so that you might experience the promises of God and going forth to gift that promise to others as you forgive them. Go forth from this place, but not from the presence of God, knowing that God is good no matter what. Amen. Oh